morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? Can you hear me okay up the back? Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Um, my name is Karen Annett Thomas. I'm the Assistant Director here at La Trobe Art Institute. Um, and before we get started today, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting here on Jaja Wurrung privilege and honour to undertake our work here on Jarrah Country and to walk alongside the traditional custodians of this land and, um, you know, benefit from all of the, um, the beauty and um, culture that is, you know, under our feet and around us every day. Um, so I'd like to make that acknowledgement, but also acknowledge that um, we are on the last day of Reconciliation Week this week. Um, and it's been a packed week for us at the Institute. It's been a week, a week of listening and learning. And um, I'd like to invite us all to carry forward that spirit, um, not just in Reconciliation Week, um, but every week, especially this year, which is um, a, a monumental and sure to be um, quite a challenging year, especially for First Nations people in our country. Um, OK, so we have a very exciting day today. Exciting for us as... Um, panelists and speakers and hopefully exciting for you all as well. A chance for us all to sort of be in front of each other, um, beside each other, to have conversations, to ask questions um, and to learn a bit about your practice, what you do and for us uh, to share a bit about why we do what we do and um, how our various spaces and activities are different. Um, so hopefully with the view of helping you navigate what is a very mysterious and sometimes confusing and um, you know, sometimes like it can and feel feel like an impenetrable kind of art world. So we hope to make that kind of far more accessible. And I see this as being the first in what I hope is a number of um, these kinds of opportunities for us to share information with each other. Um, so I'm not going to talk a lot because we've got a lot to get through. Um, there's going to be opportunities to ask questions at the end, each of, uh, end of each of the four sessions. Um, and that's going to be quite tight still, that, that sort of 15 minutes. But we are also inviting everyone to join us for lunch at the Rifle. Yes. Yeah. Um, so come along, join us for lunch. If you've got any of those like burning questions where you'd like to... Um, <laughs> Sorry, Siri. <laughs> oh, we've got AI in the room with us as well. Um, <laughs> no, pull me up. <laughs> so, <laughs> line. Um, yeah, so there's going to be opportunities over lunch to have those sort of more one-on-one -on -one conversations with our panellists, but also with each other. You might find that you're really inspired to sort of get started on something together. Okay, so our first session this morning um, is going to be facilitated by the wonderful Amy Chapman. So I said I'm from La Trobe Art Institute, but we could not deliver something like this without um, a wonderful partnership. And the partnership between La Trobe Art Institute and Emporium Creative Hub um, has been, you know, fruitful over a number of years and we've been sort of trying to work you know what what can we do that's going to have the most impact and we're hoping that this is one of the one of those things one in, of many activities that we'll be able to deliver in partnership um, so I'd like to thank Emporium Creative Hub for um, all of their work particularly Amy who's doing all the hard yards um, and uh, hand over to Amy who's going to um, facilitate our first session what spaces are for me getting to know the arts ecosystem Thank you so much, Karen. Um, I want to echo your sentiment. Um, it's been an absolute joy to work with La Trobe Art Institute to put this together. Um, we, as Karen mentioned, um, I'm Amy and I'm from the Emporium Creative Hub. I do the programming of all of our events and initiatives and support um, and supporting creatives on the whole in Greater Bendigo and beyond, but also um, particularly visual artists as you, as is testament today, there are so many incredible visual artists in Greater Bendigo and beyond. And um, it's wonderful to have you all in the one place. We knew you were out there and it's, um, we were looking for what, and we, we, I, we speak to people all the time about how we can best support you. And so it's so good to see faces that I know from projects that we put together, but so many new ones. So please, throughout the day and particularly at, uh, during lunch, and I would really um, invite you to Go and find out, uh, find some faces that you haven't met before during lunch and um, take it as an opportunity to meet some of the incredible people doing work. If you haven't engaged with us at the Emporium before, I would really love you to drop in, uh, email us, 
come to one of our networking events um, and also um, events like today, which again we hope will be something that continues on. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the beautiful country of the Jajawarung people and I feel absolute privilege to be able to create and connect um, on such wonderful land. Um, and I would also like to introduce you to the amazing panel that we are starting with today. Uh, we have, we're talking about what spaces are for me, so really getting an idea about what spaces are around uh, both in the immediate local um, Bendigo area but beyond um, and thinking about how you connect with those spaces and, um, you know, like just look, finding what's for you. What, what, what are the best places for you to put your energy and your um, imagination and creativity? So I would like to introduce you to the panel in no particular order, but uh, we have Felicity Martin, who was previously the Creative Industries Officer for the City of Greater Bendigo and is now heading up visitor services for the city and is speaking to us today on behalf of the living arts space, which is a, a wonderful space. Um, we have uh, Bella Starr, who from La Trobe Art Institute, in which we are meeting today. Um, and obviously you're very well aware if you've been here of the amazing program and work that they do here. Um, Ren and I, uh, who's coming to us, had a bit of a trek today from Geelong. So um, uh, Ren is the, one of the co-founding directors of Boom and Big Boom and their amazing spaces, contemporary art and design in the historic woolen, uh, former woolen mill in Newtown, Geelong. Um, and we have Marie Tonkin, who is coordinator of Creative Communities, the city of Greater Bendigo. So just the small task of overseeing cultural development, creative placemaking, education and engagement, First Nations led arts on behalf of the city. So a lot to talk about today. So I want to throw straight to the panel, straight to the... Um, the Brains Trust about, it would be great to just take a few minutes and just give us a snapshot of your space, your respective spaces and um, what you do, what it is that the spaces are there for and, and why you do it. I guess. Do you want us to take yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Thanks for this view. Is that on? Huh? I don't know. I get it. Are you getting it? Go. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, everybody. Yes, I'm Felicity Martin, and I'm currently the, the manager of Visitor Service Centre um, at, here in Bendigo. And I work with the um, tourism and major events team. So our focus is really around um, providing visitor services for both those visitors coming into the region, but as well as locals who maybe um, have the... Um, maybe having their, their families and relatives come and visit and then also too for those that, that might be wanting to find information about visiting more broadly. So that means that the structure of the people that come and visit us is quite broad, so from international right through. Um, our services are booking accommodation and events and tours and then we also have some creative spaces. So we have um, the Jajawima um, Gallery, which First Nations Gallery, which Marie programs, and she'll talk to you more about that one. Um, but then we also have the Living Art Space, which um, Amy was um, referring to, which is our art space for uh, mostly locals and regional artists. So that is a space um, that we curate, and our curator is Amy Carbottomley, and I would suggest that you all reach out to her because while our exhibitions are invitation only we do actually take um, proposals and things from people as well so um, it's an amazing space we also have a retail side of the business so we have a lot of artists designers um, and local um, crafts people makers that have their products in our retail space so a lot of times we might have an exhibition um, which is the experience and then we also may have um, opportunities for more retail side of um, uh, opportunities too. So there's quite a lot that we're also doing. We've got some new programs happening. We've got some activation in our atrium spaces, which is our big, large windows. They're going to be commissioned. So um, artist fees, yay. Um, and I guess we'll probably get more into how 
how the spaces operate, but that's really, I guess we have about 100,000 visitors come through the doors annually, and um, so it's, it's quite a unique audience that you can get exposed to. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Felicity. Next in line. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, as was mentioned, my name's Ren, uh, Ren Ine. Um, based in Geelong, we run Boom Gallery. It was opened in 2011. Um, really, we the idea came from the space, uh, a space, an old woolen mill, and we're in that space. Um, often, my ideas are activated by spaces, and that's sort of how it sort of works. But previous to that, I was probably organising and curating little exhibitions in cafes and public spaces and, and things like that over a long period of time. And yeah, sort of just formed, and uh, we, we started this thing called Boom. And when we started, we, we thought, well, we need to attract people into the space, so we better have something that, uh, you know, people just walking straight into a gallery in a context where they're not really used to that in a daily part of their living. We thought, well, maybe we should put a cafe in the space and maybe like a gift shop sort of in the space, which is probably turned into our design gallery. And we thought they were really great entry points. So what we found has happened is people come in for a coffee, uh, and then they, while they're waiting for the coffee, they'll walk through, and next minute they're viewing an exhibition. Uh, it's worked very well for us to get us to the point we're at now. Um, and then we saw a great need for studio spaces and office spaces for creatives. So we do sublease a lot of spaces in the mill and it's sort of grown into quite a, a big sort of community. We'd probably have over 50 sub-tenants, um, ranging from architects to web designers to visual artists to everything else. And that really creates a great body of people sort of and, and really activates our area. Um, it's not something I intended to do, but often when you work, when you walk forward in your artistic journey, opportunities arise that you never conceived at the start, and that's definitely true for us. Um, yeah, so we're a commercial gallery. We've never sought funding or anything like that. We are a private business, um, but it really was born out of a passion for regional Victoria. Um, I, I grew up in Geelong. Um, when I was 18, I studied in Warrnambool and did a fine arts degree down there, and you know, I probably chose to go to Warrnambool because I surfed back then and I thought, you know, what a wonderful place. And it really was and it just got into my system and even my art practice is pretty much around Warrnambool and where the ocean meets the land um, and that kind of thing. So I lo I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, it's, it's Central Victoria is incredible and I really do love it up here. Um, if anyone wants to start up a space like ours up here, you're more than free to come and chat to me at lunch and I'll give you some tips. Brilliant. Thank Pass it down to Marie. Thanks, Ren. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, so I'm Marie Tonkin. So I'm part of the leadership team that manage a suite of arts and cultural venues on behalf of City of Greater Bendigo. So I'm going to just stick to the visual arts venues because there are so many. So our larger, we have uh, Alumbra Theatre, the Capitol Theatre, um, Dudley House. Um, but I'll talk about the spaces that there's a team of us. There are four of us. Rowan Phillips will be here later today. Um, he administers a lot of those creative spaces. Essentially, for artists, it really is choose your own adventure. We have so many spaces for you to choose from. So there are several, and all of these spaces are, are churning over. Artists are coming in at different times. Um, every fortnight, there's a changeover of, of artists um, utilising those venues and spaces. So um, there is Dudley House. Um, across the road here, we've got Exhibit B. There are two spaces. There's one in Mitchell Street at the Bendigo Bank Branch, and there's also um, the one down in Fountain Court. So Exhibit B Central, Exhibit B Mitchell. Um, we also have Penny Waite Walk Open Air Gallery. So uh, for uh, artists that are interested in creating works in public place, um, and also ground level Chancery Lane, which is the Hargrave Street end of Chancery Lane for, um, for street artists as well. And our foyer spaces, um, upstairs and downstairs at the Capitol. We also have the Carriageway, which is a digital display space um, at the Capitol, and a new billboard that we just installed only a couple of weeks ago. So an art billboard specifically for the rotation of, of artists that are wanting, again, to work in public place. There's lots of options there. They all have various models and frameworks for um, access. Um, some are for hire, some are uh, subsidy grants that you can apply for, some are commissioned, um, some are direct commission, and some of those spaces we use for programs that align with community programs. So it could be things like 
the Writers' Festival, it could be the Bloom Camp, the City's Bloom Campaign, where we look for artists that are working with a, a particular, in a particular way um, that aligns with some of those frameworks for um, NAIDOC Week, for example. Um, Jaja Wimmer uh, is our new space that we set up last year. Janet Bromley uh, works within my team. Um, Janet is the curator and she works with uh, Wataka Group, which is a meeting with purpose group. So it's very much First Nations led. I'm not involved in the, in the programming or the curatorial framework of that space. It's very much led by First Nations uh, artists. Um, so look, yeah, come up and talk, uh, ask me anything you like, but um, there's so many options there and it really is there for you. We mostly work with artists, it is a development team, so we mostly see artists at the very, I guess at the start of their career. Um, and, uh, and young people, you know, so children, young people, um, we have the Raw Art Awards coming up, that's when we see a lot of artists at the start of their career and then we see them on their journey. So we like to support and develop that as much as we can. Um, and we're here for you. We're a great team. We're open. Just, just make yourself known. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Hi. Thank you. And I uh, just wanted to preface my comments quickly by saying I think this is such an important question. I remember um, working with emerging artists many, many years, many decades ago, actually, and... The question often is, you know, is this about the inclusion and exclusion of organisations? And I've always encouraged artists to consider this as a two-way conversation, so to speak. Artists have the capacity to make decisions and to, to make judgments around what space is appropriate for them, just as we have the opportunity to include and exclude through our programs. Uh, the most important thing to say about La Trobe Art Institute is that we're a university department, so to speak. So the way that you understand our programs and our offer to artists is by understanding the university's values, the specific cultural remit, if you like, of a university like La Trobe that is based regionally. Uh, and I would say also that our... Our identity, so to speak, is complex in that sense. Our building offers two gallery spaces, but our footprint also offers an apartment, a studio, this meeting room, we're a gathering space. We offer opportunities for international guests to come through and contribute within this community. So the regional location, the the nature of what we need, what we perceive to need here in regional Victoria, rigorous contemporary art conversation and discourse around cutting edge practices, that is perhaps our point of difference, and also connection to a broad community of expertise, academics and professional staff who are deeply engaged in their subject areas. So that's just by way of framework. Thank you. Thanks, Bella. Um, so you can see there's so many different in inroads to these these um, spaces, they're all incredibly different. So, my next question is probably huge, um, but I do wonder how, what kind of artists and artwork we'll delve a bit deeper into who who you represent in those spaces. So, is there a focus for you? Is there a, the, the the kind of exhibitions that you you are your Bread and butter is not the greatest term, but the things that you you, you do program often and like to do. Yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have quite a, um, a broad um, curatorial, I guess, framework in that we want to create experiences for visitors and audiences, um, first and foremost, but we also are really aware of supporting local um, artists and regional artists because this space for us is really about showcasing NGO and the region and to give people a sense when they come into the visitor centre what is Bendigo all about, who lives here, what are their stories um, and also to I guess we're also looking at contemporary practice so what are the artists, what do they want to talk about, what's important to them, what are their ideas and so it's very much a, a local um, focus, but it's also, I guess, trying to create an experience for visitors that um, will, I guess, excite them to then uh, go out further into the region and explore the region. So um, as I mentioned, we do have a curator and we have 
about four to five exhibitions per year, and many of those um, exhibitions may be curated in line with the um, tourism and marketing campaigns. So each, um, there's two definite ones, Ignite, which is our winter campaign, and then Bloom, which is the spring festival campaign. And then there's a number of other campaigns that might um, align with the art gallery. So usually, like at the moment, there's the Australiana exhibition on. So the campaign is Fair Dinkum. And so there's um, a little bit of programming around that. We recently had Frankie O in that exhibition, in our exhibition Swoop, which was her beautiful, bold, um, print works, um, embellished prints and paintings. So that kind of you know, loosely fitted into, um, into that campaign. So we, um, we do have that focus. And so um, I guess we are looking at, they're not always around, um, I guess, commercial. There is also opportunities for non-commercial exhibitions. So we have an artist at the moment that's in the um, gallery, Paul Harrington, and he is an artist working at Donut Studios, which is a, um, a artist with disabilities. So we kind of, because we're council, we, we really are trying to be inclusive um, and um, provide you know lots of different opportunities from that point of view. Wonderful. Um, we uh, we represent a lot of artists from Geelong, our immediate region, and probably the majority of our artists are from Geelong and the Surf Coast. So the Surf Coast, a lot of them would be around Torquay sort of area, um, going down areas inlet even more. Um, so that's the majority. And then we'd have uh, another really large group that's in Melbourne, Melbourne-based artists, um, and then um, regional Victoria. Um, and then we'd have, you know, a good hand of probably, you know, six to ten interstate artists. And then we have a spattering of international artists as well to show with us. One of the things I'm really um, keen to do in our spaces is, is to make sure that our regional artists have the opportunity to show alongside and in programs with artists from um, a broader context. So um, I think it's wonderful that you might have someone from you know, far north Queensland showing alongside someone from Geelong. That's a really great opportunity that we've been able to provide. Um, I think things that have helped us to do that and to have that reach is you know, obviously social media and a really great website. website. It's just imperative. And with those two things, you really can operate a gallery anywhere. Um, having said that, we're also probably yeah, the second largest city in, in, in Victoria, um, and that's grown so much. We've had, I think, we've had a ten percent increase in population you know, during COVID and so forth. So, and a lot of them are creatives. A lot of people have left Melbourne, and it's funny the, the pioneering ones and the ones that seem to move first are creative people. They seem to be up for a challenge and the new horizons. So, um, we've definitely noticed that. We we have three um, exhibitions every month, so you can imagine, you know, across two different spaces. So it's a lot to coordinate. So um, you know, that can be solo exhibitions and sometimes they're large group exhibitions as well. So we like to have a diversity and a mixture of what we show. Yeah, it could be printmaking in one space, sculpture in another, and then painting in another. We definitely do not want to be a picture gallery that just you know champions painting. So we really want to try to not do that. We have commercial constraints on us. So I would love to have more experimental shows and shows that have got no commercial liability whatsoever. Uh, I have to bar I have to be like a businessman as well when I'm looking at these things. We have to have enough commercial shows to be able to support that as well. So it's a constant balancing act. And we've had COVID and you now we've got tough economic conditions as well. So my job as owner of the business is to try and navigate through that and provide opportunities at the same time. So it's not always uh, easy, but we try to do the best we can. We get a lot of submissions. We would probably get, you know, maybe on average three to four submissions from artists every week. And we make sure we get back to everyone, but Often it's, sorry, we cannot take on any further artists at the moment. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure some of you may have even approached us, I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, it's a really hard thing to do, but we can only do what we can do, and we are a small team, so we try our hardest. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Um, our spaces are primarily for community. We are the City of Greater Benigo providing arts and cultural services on behalf of Council. So, um, you know, we, our space is really open. I mean, I guess for us too, it is a development unit. So it's really linking artists to our spaces. So what's your practice? What is it that you're wanting? And cultural expression is really important. So it's, 
And artists really need to drive their own outcomes here. It's not for us, our spaces aren't, we don't have curatorial framework as such. We let the artists decide what is, it, what is it and what space is best for them in their arts practice. Um, so uh, we hope that we have enough variety in those options that artists can say, you know, Exhibit B, if you're, if you're just starting out and this is your very first solo show, you know, something like Dudley House might be a little bit daunting. How are you going to fill that space? Um, you know, it's a lot to take on. You know, it's not a staff space. You have to coordinate, you know, the sitting of that, that exhibition. So something like Exhibit B, where you might have a small body, a smaller body of work, it's a little bit experimental, you're trying out some new things, it might be the space that's best for you in your art practice at that time. And then as your practice is developing, you might say, hey, you know, maybe I want to, you know, explore a group show, um, a collaboration with other artists in the region or, or with, you know, with, within your network. So Dudley House might be the better option for you. Um, it's really up to you, but uh, cultural expression and how you choose whatever your art form is, we hope that we've got something there for you um, that will enable you to experiment, take some risks, try some new things. Um, you know, just yeah, yeah, just just do it. Just get out, come out, and um, I mean, experiment. If you has anyone here, put your hands up if you had a show at Exhibit B. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. I had an art exhibition. Yep. yep. I'm trying to go. Yeah. Dudley House. Oh, no. I know yeah. I have so there's only a few hands going up. So, you know, these spaces are available for you. Um, street artists. Pennyweight Walk, any of those Dud uh, ground level, chance for Lane. Yeah, yeah, see there's there's opportunities there for all of you here. Um, we'd love to see you coming forward and applying for some of those things. Uh, here at the Trove Art Institute in this building, we produce four curated exhibitions every year. Uh, we do have a curatorial framework, and just in summary, thinking about those exhibitions, we have a curator in-house, Amelia Wallen, and we also work often with guest curators who are from overseas or other places around Australia, and that's in a way echoing the model of a visiting professor, for example, at a university, who comes to introduce new thinking, new perspectives, changes our way of working and our way of thinking about what we do, very productive aspect of our program. And we also produce a number of commissions and uh, interventions and exhibitions in other campuses and buildings and galleries, such as our partnership with Bendigo Art Gallery to present the Jeff Brady collection of contemporary Chinese art recently. Um, but I think it would be a bit um, disingenuous to only talk about our exhibition program when it comes to what artists can gain from our program. We also, as I mentioned earlier, have the apartment and the auditorium, so we see ourselves as a place for discourse. It's also, I think, important to uh, recognise that it's a small team, and the opportunity of that is that we welcome anybody at any time to approach our team, to ask questions, to uh, engage in mentorships and educational programs. There are a number of people in the room we've worked with very closely in those terms. And that also means formally and informally. So we do see ourselves as a resource. And, uh, and I think, um, yes, yeah, so the, 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 um, the other thing I just wanted to say in terms of the significance of, I suppose, universities' patronage of visual arts is that it recognises that visual arts provides a sort of portal to the community that is not otherwise available to it. And it's very much a point of two-way exchange. That's wonderful. You can hold on to that if you like. Um, I just wanted to ask, because you've all touched on artists engaging with you and that you all really encourage people to get in contact and ask questions, um, knowing that you can't work with everybody within the constraints um, of, of what it is that you do. But there's so many opportunities and ways to connect. So um, my, my next connect, um, question is based around if you could speak a little bit about how can artists best, when, when is the right time to talk to you? What should they bring? What should they be thinking about um, bef before? And then how, how could they best make themselves known to you and work with you in that way? Um, <laughs> Um, I have a curated program, and the best way is when you feel that you might have a conversation around your exhibition, please approach us. Uh, and that would be that you would meet with either me as a director.
director or our curator, Amelia, and we would have a conversation with you that I would hope would be quite frank and open. And it, it is probably uh, unlikely that we would say, uh, we would offer you an exhibition here because we primarily make curated group exhibitions, which are about creating contexts for art here and elsewhere and making a contribution to contemporary art discourse more broadly. So we do have a specific framework, as I mentioned earlier, but I think whenever you would like to have a conversation, we are here to have that conversation in very sort of open terms. And it would touch on some of the questions we're having today around what might be the right place and so on. And I know there are people we've had those conversations with. Thank you. Um, Look, we're a team of four, so uh, so I work full time. I'm just based over here at the Capitol Theatre. Rowan Phillips is four days a week. Cecile Shanahan, Education Engagement, she's two days a week. Janet Bromley is four days a week. So we're available at any time. Um, there are a number of number of ways that you can get in contact with the team, um, and uh, we have we're. We have a presence on Facebook, um, we have an email address. I've put together a bit of a pack to share with you um, later today. Um, but look, we're available, just contact us anytime. All of the opportunities that we have, we do advertise those um, on our Facebook page, on the city's um, social media accounts. Um, we do uh, produce an artsy bulletin, so if you're not already receiving that, a lot of information and opportunities that we have are published there um, fortnightly. So if you're not already receiving that, um, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, but reach out. We really, you know, we're happy to meet with anyone. What I do love is in our role is that uh, when we see artists bumping into Dudley House, we do get that lovely opportunity to come and have a chat as artists are bumping in. It's a good opportunity to get to, to know you, uh, to know your work. Um, we'll often photograph, you know, the, that bump in and put it up on our socials and try to really share within our networks who are, who's actually exhibiting in our spaces um, and try to really push that out for you and help you with some of that, um, uh, some of that media and people getting to know you. Um, it's impossible for us to know everyone, so unless you're coming forward, we, you know, we try to, to, to stay across what's happening in, in uh, the arts ecosystem. I have, uh, I have a no meeting Friday rule. Friday's my go see day. So where I haven't been able to get to an exhibition launch on a weekend or uh, an artist has a new show somewhere else, I will make an effort on that Friday to go and connect with that artist. So I might go out to Bendigo Pottery, I'll go out to where our arts hubs are, I'll go and visit studios. Um, it's just, re just, yeah, let's start a conversation. We're there for you. Little one. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, it's a really tricky question. It really got me thinking. Um, it's a very difficult one because I'm quite social and I like talking to people. And yet we've had to protect ourselves a little bit because we get inundated with requests. Um, so we've sort of asked them all to come through formally to us via email, like a proper proposal. Because um, we've had all sorts of things in the past where, oh, I won't even go into details, but it gets really tricky when someone just dumps all their artwork on your counter and starts to show you their work. And, you know, so we've just had to get a bit hard-nosed about it in a nice way. <laughs> it's really tricky. Um, but having said that, I think always sincerity and just being really genuine, genuine and authentic is probably the way to go. Um, not looking too needy, uh, not being too desperate, um, just having some composure and approaching us or anyone else, I imagine, with some integrity. So I'm just thinking back to a young... Well, he's 24 years old now, one of our artists, Harry McAvoy, who's now studying at VCA in his first year. I met him when he was 16 and... There was a young guy who could come into the gallery every few days and he'd have his skateboard under his arm and he'd just be staring at the artworks and he fascinated me. And after about two weeks of this, I had to go and talk to him. And um, but he had such a passion for making art and I actually went back to his house and saw his bedroom, typical teenager's bedroom. He could barely walk through his space and he had a little living area as well that was just covered in art where he would paint on found objects, anything he'd find. And I just, you know, he's such a great person as well. So... <sighs> Yeah, anyway, we're great mates, and he's really gone. He's had lots of solo shows with us, and he's had an opportunity to show in Sydney recently, and I think he'll just keep going on and on and on. And I just tell that story because that's one way that someone has approached the gallery, actually just by looking at the artwork and engaging with the shows. 
Um, so I know I've got one of our artists here, Karima. Hi, Karima. Um, and Karima lives in Clues. Now, you moved from Melbourne, is that right, Karima? Yeah. So she's one of those creatives that's actually moved from Melbourne into, a, into regional Victoria. And she's been shown with us. And, um, you know, I was told about Karima's work from another artist. It's probably one of the greatest ways you'll get introduced to a gallery. When you do get introduced to a gallery, the first thing we're going to do is check you out online. Yeah? So your social media account is probably the most important tool you have. Um, don't, you know, if you really want to make it an arts-based account, that's probably the best idea. And don't include photos of your dog and, you know, your family. Have one of those accounts, by all means. Have that separate, but have an arts-focused one. If you want to approach galleries, commercial galleries, and get into the system, it's probably the greatest thing you can do. And don't just post about yourself. Post about the other things you're interested in, visual arts-wise as well. It's probably a really great asset. Yeah, I would really echo that um, website uh, or Instagram, um, just images of your work uh, is, is really important. Uh, as I said, we, we do curate, but once a year we do call out for um, submissions. And I do have, um, it's actually the 22, 23 submissions, um, but you can anytime um, put in a submission to our LAS email address. So we um, do have a number of solo exhibitions that we will do and mostly uh, we will do group shows. So if you just want to showcase your work um, and you're open to be curated into a group show, that's great. Um, if you've got an idea for, you know, it could even be a small group show, like two people, um, something like that, then definitely put that together, what that um, theme might be, what the idea might be, and um, who, who you might include in that exhibition, and definitely photographs, and really good photographs, because I think a lot of times we get images um, of work and it's hard to really tell what you know what the work is about so I would um, encourage people to to work on that I know it's hard you've spent all this time um, creating the work and then there's more work to do but um, I do think it, it'll be beneficial for you um, that's the main way I guess that you can connect with us if you come in and know the space um, if you send, if you, um, I guess, connect with that LAS. We also do promote our exhibitions and programs and opportunities through Marie's Networks as well. So if you're connected to Marie's Networks, then you'll definitely get our information too. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the main way. Amazing. Um, I think on social media too, um, it can be the worst part of being a creative is the marketing piece um, and certainly that's somewhere that Emporium Creative Hub steps in a lot in that we are a community of creatives not just in the in the sense of commercial creatives as well so we work with a lot of copywriters SEO people um, there's so many different uh, website designers all that kind of thing to that um, so there is a community there that you can also tap into um, to outsource some of that hard work as well we have a studio as well um, that uh, uh, we hire where you can take product photos and that kind of thing so to try and get those professional photos and that kind of thing done so we have a lot of those resources so please um, yeah do get in contact to see if we can assist you and connect you up with the people who can make that part of it easier so that you can get on with making the art um, which is of course what everyone wants to do but yeah you can't do that it's a vicious cycle of you can't do it without the promotion piece in there can we talk about money? <laughs> it's um, it's a tricky one, and um, so you you uh, there's very different formats. There's different ways that money's coming in. Ren, obviously, you've mentioned that it's a commercial space, and that that's a definite consideration in how you program. So I wanted to throw it out to the panel in um, how you're funded, how that um, that changes what you can and can't do and also um, with artists thinking about how they then work with you in terms of considering okay is this 
what, what's the cost going to be to me? How's the income coming in? Is this a commission base? Am I selling things? Um, what are my outgoings going to be? And that kind of thing, because that's that can be a really tricky thing to wrap your head around when you're looking at what opportunities to actually undertake. Who would like to tackle that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, as I said earlier, we have... Uh, I guess a handful of programs. So for Dudley House, there are a couple of options there. You can hire, as artists, you can hire that space. Um, it's $712 a week. Um, or you take up an option where you can apply for a subsidy. There are six subsidy grants that are offered a year um, through the City of Greater Bendigo, administered by our team at Creative Communities. With the subsidy program, um, you don't pay for that higher fee, so that's included. There's also a $1,000 grant to help you with the production of your exhibition. You may choose, you uh, you, you can choose how you want to spend that, um, that cash grant that comes with that subsidy. It could be for presentation, it could be for your launch event, it could be for, for marketing and promotion and of your exhibition. You'll also uh, you get a three-hour uh, technical support as well. So one of our technicians um, will help you hang your show um, or to help you, um, you know, sort of stage the works that, that you're wanting to put on in Dudley House. So there's a couple of options there. The foyer exhibitions, so at the Capitol Theatre, so upstairs, downstairs, there are two opportunities a year and there are also $1,000 grants to help you uh, in the presentation of your works. Um, and then our other spaces are free. So um, Exhibit B, we usually, they're really popular spaces, Exhibit B, and they book out about 12 months in advance. Um, they're free spaces, so there's there's no uh, cost to you. And we will help with, with promotion of those events through our networks. Um, the... Cities, I mean, I think talking about grants, I think there's a session later this afternoon and Rowan will, can drill down and talk to you a little bit more about the city's grants programs proper. Um, but, look, we try to make those spaces uh, available and affordable. Um, things like commissions, um, often... So, if you are a street artist um, or you're wanting to work in public place, um, we do apply. Whilst we're a City Greater Bendigo unit, uh, we have a certain budget that we work to to fund our programs. Um, but we also... Um, seek funding from funding bodies. So things like those larger commissions. So we've worked on uh, things like White Night in linking artists to present work as part of White Night. Um, we've done the Bendigo Projection Festival. We applied for $160,000 from Creative Victoria um, to host that event and we went on a program of then linking artists to that. Um, things like uh, Bendigo Writers Festival um, will work in partnership as well. So it helps, uh, uh, we have to, like everyone, apply for funding. If if I find there's a program that we're wanting to design to support uh, local artists and we don't have um, the budget to do that, we'll go out and find the money if we can. And like everyone else, um, the administrations of grants is a challenge. Also to um, thinking about if your intent as an artist is to um, create income from your, um, from your art making, um, you've got to be seen to be sold. So again, harking back to social media, um, we don't know you exist. You need to, you know, these opportunities are there for you. Grab hold of them because people don't, won't know who you are. You need to be out there and working on that um, tirelessly um, and hopefully there's a, some opportunities that will, will get you on your way. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, all I would say in relation to social media as well, just picking that up, is uh, coming from a not-for-profit organisation like this one, uh, I, I see it as our our responsibility to find out what is going on in the community as well, social media or no. So we need to do the work, we need to do the labour, we need to do the research and that's why it's always helpful for us to see your work, to understand it better. It's in our interests to know your work and whether or not we include it as part of the program, it informs what we do as an institute and I can't emphasise that enough. Um, we are, again, not... For, does that make sense? 
As a not-for-profit organisation, we pay National Association of Visual Arts, NAVA, rates. Does everybody know NAVA? Um, and they guide our payments for commissions and artist fees. Yeah, um, we do, of, of course, apply for funding for special projects, but as a rule, La Trobe University pays our artist fees. Mm. <laughs> um, I suppose I'm uh, yeah, running a space that pretty much is basically a commercial space. So I'm just trying to think of uh, advice I could give you. Um, I imagine if we could s imagine that there was a river and you wanted to get to the other side and that's maybe that other side of the river might be like financial freedom to be able to just make your art whenever you wanted to and not have to hold down a, another job. And for a lot of artists that would be like a, a real goal just to be able to make their work and not have to go and work, you know, hospitality four nights a week or be a builder's labourer during the week and then at night try to squeeze some painting in and we come across those stories all the time with our artists and um, I imagine if you had to cross that river and there was a whole bunch of stepping stones the idea is to take, take hold of the stone that's right in front of you and don't get ahead of yourself and try to jump three or four stones ahead which often we see people trying to do um, there's no shortcuts um, you might get lucky and we do see that happen too we get some artists that just wow uh, we've had one artist come through our gallery that's now internationally established and living in France and his work even on the secondary market is between hundred to $200,000. You know, and he was showing with us not that long ago and his most expensive works were three and a half grand. So this stuff can happen, it's very rare. It's like when someone winning Tesla. Though. It doesn't not gonna happen very often, <laughs> but it does happen. Um, so be, I think you have to be very mindful of your own practice and actually know we're talking about money here, so be mindful of the commerciality of your work. If that's not a concern of yours, don't worry about it. Don't even enter into that market. Um, maybe look for other options to make your work. But if it is you want to make money from your practice, there are opportunities. We've noticed even since we've been open, and it might be because we've got more established, but when we first opened, most of our artists worked either full-time or part-time and made work on the side. Um, now it's got to a point where we've seen a lot of our artists who actually make their work full-time and don't have any other employment or jobs on the side. And that's been incredible. And I think COVID helped a lot with that because we had a massive surge in online sales. Um, Melburnians who were locked down um, loved a bit of retail therapy during COVID. And, um, you know, that's backed right off now. But we sold so much work during that period that it actually got us through COVID really well. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I hope that all makes sense. I've probably got heaps more stuff I could tell you, but, yeah, in short, given time. Yeah, so we're um, local government, but we are meant to be um, somewhat self-funded. So there is that commercial um, side of our business that we need to make income. Um, but so it, it's sort of a hybrid in some ways that we have some kind of a commercial focus, but we definitely have a, um, a lens which is uh, community focused as well. So um, I guess the opportunities for our space is that we um, don't charge for the space. The space is free. Um, the openings are paid for by the visitor centre uh, and we are open um, seven days a week and we only close a Christmas day. So um, that's hence why we have such a huge audience. So there's those benefits. Um, we do the marketing, we pay for the marketing for you, um, we create the um, the posters, the um, invitations and we also market through the tourism and marketing um, channels. So from that point of view uh, it's you know, there's a, a lot of work that goes into it to supporting the artists and we also obviously pay the curator, um, Amy, and she is part-time and so we have to pay for her services and and basically, you know, putting together those programs. And she also then will help um, for any of the sales, the works are then distributed to customers. So you don't have to worry about that side of things either, which sometimes can be, you know, a bit onerous as well. So, so there's a lot of work that we do provide and a lot of funding that does go in behind it, but then we do charge a commission. So um, unfortunately, 
life isn't free. Um, we wish it was, but there's always um, something, you know, somewhere that we, we have to be able to afford to A, have the space, B, employ the people, and C, do the marketing and, and put in all of those resources. But I do think it's a great opportunity for people who um, are trying to juggle those jobs and can't sit in, in a gallery space um, and you just and you want to have the opportunity to be curated because sometimes that is um, a different experience for some artists who are used to curating themselves but this actually gives you um, a to an opportunity to be engaged with a curator, to see your work in a different way, to have it presented in a different way. So that suits some artists and it doesn't suit everybody. So we, we recognise that, but just um, there's, there's definitely that opportunity for those sorts of um, practitioners. That's wonderful. Now we are getting to the end of our session. I think we've probably got a little bit of time for a couple of questions. Is anyone, well, there's a hand straight up. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, how does this go with a mask? Yep. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, thank you, all of you. Really appreciate your time today. Um, quick question that came up immediately just then. Felicity, um, you mentioned there's a commission. Are you able to share the rate with us, please? That's 35%. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Cheers. Up here and then. <laughs> uh, same as the question before, and that's for Boom Gallery. Um, you, uh, I assume you have a commission and rate, and also a cost for exhibiting. Yeah, we we we, we uh, have a forty percent commission, which we think is fairly standard. It's probably fairly standard for a regional area. Um, I think now if you find, if you go to Melbourne, it's probably mostly 45 to 50% commission. Or, oh, sorry. Um, we have a 40% commission at Boom, which I think you'll find is pretty common for a lot of galleries. Um, it's probably the old rate. It's been a rate we've used for 12 years now, so we've never really increased the commission. Mind you, it's tempting sometimes because those costs really do add up. And I know it looks like a big chunk of the money, and it actually is, but our hope is we'll increase your sale price as well. So it's not just taking a commission on what you normally get for your artwork. It's actually taking a commission out of what we hope your artwork will achieve and be able to sell for by being with us. So, um, And that's what the Melbourne galleries and Sydney galleries will do too, the really top ones. Yeah, they might charge 50% commission, but they've just doubled the price of your work as well. So that's well within your interest, possibly, to go with them. Um, now, we do have an artist contribution fee. Um, it's usually quite small. It's Well, small. Small from our perspective is running the business, but it might not be so small for an artist. Um, but for a four-week show, generally they're between $350 to about $500. Um, it's just a one-off fee. We actually uh, let the artist pay that whenever they're able to, so they can wait till after they've been paid for their artworks before they actually pay that back to us, because we understand, you know, the costs involved in putting the show together. Um, we, we thought that was important just because you, you might have a show that nothing sells and then, and then you're really stuck because you've actually invested a lot of our time and money in that. We are open seven days a week as well and we're busy and we're vibrant. We get a lot of people through the doors in a physical manner but also a lot of people looking at your work online. So, um, yeah. But even some other things we had to split, split recently, um, we used to cover the cost of things like art money. So offering art money where, you know, a, a customer could have eight-month period to pay off an artwork. We used to just carry the burden of that, but it's actually 10% of the cost of the, the work. So in reality, it was a 25% discount from the gallery's perspective and the artist wasn't carrying it. So recently, we've split that with the artist on the same commission split as the... So we're always looking to refine things. I, I um, Just quickly, I, we just looked at a commercial building the other week and the landlord said something really interesting to me. He said, you know, he really wanted to work with us. He was amazing. They were so agreeable to all of our terms and conditions. And he said, you know what, Ren, for a really good relationship to work well, it's got to work both ways. So if it's all biased towards the landlord and the, the person who's leasing the space is under the pump the whole time, it's never going to work. And that's something we've applied to our business. It has to work well for the artist. It has to work well for the gallery as well. And if it works well and fair, fairly for both parties, then it's generally in a really healthy space. Yep. Uh, no. Questions? <laughs> oh, 
Hi, is this working? Yeah, oh, so yeah, um, for Marie and Felicity, the opportunities are for Bendigo uh, resident artists, not from other shires? Yeah, a uh, little bit of a mix to that. We usually say um, if you are um, living, working or studying. So we understand being a regional centre that we have artists living, um, I guess, outside of Bendigo. Look, yes, predominantly they are um, council funded programs. So they are for residents, the city greater Bendigo. But more broadly, we do, we do have that caveat. If you have a look at some of the detail um, in those things, we will say that. So um, it's really important as a regional centre that we're nurturing artists in central Victoria and beyond. Um, and things like, uh, see, the, the larger public art commissions, sometimes they are for Victorian-based artists. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a bit of diversity there, but, yes, predominantly City Greater Bendigo residents. Uh, yeah, well, we are open to the more broadly. So while we focus on local, we do have um, artists um, in our exhibitions that are sort of, uh, I'd say, more regional as well. So because we're showcasing the region, and particularly now with the um, UNESCO City of Gastronomy, that is more broad. Um, at, and it covers more broadly. So because we are part of promoting that from a tourism point of view, we can reach out um, a bit uh, further, further afield now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yep, definitely, yep. Hello there, um, my name is Ivan and I'm, I'm a multimedia artist and I've exhibited at Exhibit A and um, Dudley House in group shows. So I'm very excited to hear all the possibilities you've described today. And especially from Marie, you know, you and your team have come down when we had group shows as part of um, Bendigo Pride, you know, to talk to us and to look at the work. So I'm excited at the, the rate you, you, you gave for, for Dudley House. And for everyone here, I would love to work with you all to put on a group show at Dudley House. And what is appropriate, what is the means, appropriate means for us to, to, to come to you for a proposal for a group show? Um, so, uh, Rowan, um, Rowan Phillips, who administers the Dudley House program, I would really in encourage you to talk to Rowan. Um, I'm not sure of the dates, but I think the next round of Dudley House subsidies are opening in September, but don't hold me to that, but I think they're coming out. Um, so, yes, definitely talk to Rowan. And for a group show, um, yeah, I definitely encourage you to talk to Rowan about when those... Um, when that program opens. Uh, there's also another opportunity in community. We often uh, work with a lot of uh, community groups and organi arts organisations that are out there doing some really great work. Really great opportunity at the moment is Tony Day is coordinating CoLab. I'm not, I, I think there'll be a number of artists here that know CoLab and know it really well. That's a great opportunity for a group show and for artists to get on board. We are providing the space. Uh, this is where we do work in partnership um, with organisations, so uh, CoLab is one of those. So, um, but yeah, Rowan will be here later. Thank you, Mary. Encourage and, you to talk to Rowan. Yeah. And just one final thing, um, I'm, I work at the Emporium Creative Hub and I'm part of the um, incubator program. So if I put a call out for, for a group show, I would probably use that as one of the avenues. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's interested, please sign up for the, um, the newsletter for the Emporium Creative Hub. Thank you. Felicity, I think it is. Uh, yes, it's las at bendigo.vic.gov.au. Bendigo.vic.gov.au. We can grab some of the resources. I'm going to be emailing everybody, and I've also got a QR code that will link you to a resources page that I'm putting together with everything that, we've t that comes up today. Um, so I'll be adding to that web page as those kind of things come in. So I'll just make sure you see me on the way out today and I'll give that to you so you can access it and I'll email it as well. Um, thank you so much um, I just um, for those beautiful questions uh, and I hope that this session has really kind of opened up proceedings today in terms of positioning it in galleries and I really want to thank the, this amazing panel for your time and your expertise and your openness to connecting with artists um, and
and it's yeah, it's just a great way to start um, today's hard work and deep thinking mm -hmm. and communication. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.